All right, let's go to John chapter 12, please. John chapter 12. The pastor just said that he was thinking about doing a message on palm trees, so I guess I stole it from his mind this evening. John chapter 12. I think that's what happened there. John chapter 12 and verse 12, the Bible says, On the next day, this is after the Sabbath, so it's a Sunday. It is. I don't know why this is controversial in some places, but it's definitely Sunday. On the next day, much people that were coming to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Sion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening, Lord. Thank you for this chance for us to come together this Palm Sunday evening to learn more about you and your word. And Father, just fills with the Spirit of God, Lord, as we discuss palm trees this evening, because it's... I always wondered, why, why palm leaves? I don't, I don't understand. And you said here, Lord, quite clearly that your disciples were able to understand afterwards. And so we're trying to do that as well this evening. So help us to do that, Lord. And we give you thanks and praise for all things, especially for the salvation that you gave through your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And yes, today is Palm Sunday, and today was a triumphal entry of our Lord Jesus Christ where he came in and made clear that he is the King of Israel. He announced it, you know, before people had said it, and he would hide and he would go away, but not this day. He made it clear to everyone. Um, even during the week, he performed some execution as king, and that's part of why he got crucified. People didn't like, you know, him letting them know the reality of their sin situation. Okay. But today, he's coming in, and he's on this ass is cold, and we notice that the people laid palm leaves in his path. The pastor talked about how that was like the red carpet of that time. Okay. But I read this, and I'm like, why palm leaves? Why not lilies? You know, we got those over there. Okay. There's all kinds of other cool flowers in the Bible, right, and cool trees. Why, why those specifically? Okay. And so this evening we'll just talk about palm trees, and we'll see and hopefully figure out what kind of picture God's trying to give us here in 2022. Okay. Go to 1 Kings 6. 1 Kings 6. Let's take a look here. 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 29. We have a description of what's going on in Solomon's temple. Okay. Israel first, they had a tabernacle that they would go around and wander with. Okay. And then David wanted to build a place for the Lord that was in one spot, and that's Solomon's temple. Okay. 1 Kings 6 and verse 29. And what you find out is when uh, Solomon was building the inner house, a spot where the oracle would be, that's the ark of God. So this is like the most holy place in this temple. Part of that building is in verse 29, it says... And he carved all the walls of the house round about with carved figures of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers within and without. So you can imagine walking into this inner house, this room, and all around you, you see pictures of cherubims that are etched in to the walls and palm trees. Okay? And not just inside that portion, if you were to step out, you see it without. God wanted to make sure that these were seen. Okay? This is part of manifesting his glory, which is probably part of why it was there in Palm Sunday. So the question is, what is that about? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now when you study the scriptures, you find out that Solomon's temple has some ties to the millennium in some ways. It's trying to give you a picture of what God's going to be doing then. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is postulate that the palm trees are you. Let's see if I can prove that. Okay. Let's see if we can actually pull that out. Go to Deuteronomy 34. Deuteronomy 34. What do you mean, man? What do you mean? Okay, well, Pastor mentioned Psalm 1 before we started praying. It's supposed to be like a tree planted in the rivers of water, right? Deuteronomy 34, and verse 3, what you see here is the Bible says, And the south 
and the plain of the valley of Jericho. We've heard of this city. All kinds of wild stuff happened in this city. The, the walls came down. People got destroyed. You know, Joshua got victories there, right? But notice, Jericho is the city of palm trees. That's Azor. So that's what it means. Okay. And we have this city called Jericho, and it's connected to palm trees. Palm trees are located there, I would imagine, historically. And likewise, okay, Christian, you used to be in Jericho. And you were one of them trees I was just chilling there. Okay. What does Jericho represent? Well, Luke 10 probably popped in your mind, didn't it? Go to Luke 10. Luke chapter 10. Does everybody here raise their Bible? They kind of figure out where I'm going as I'm going there. Luke 10. In verse 30, <clears throat> the Lord gives a story here, okay? I wonder if it's a parable. I know people say it is, but maybe you should look at the narration there. Luke 10, in verse 30, the Bible says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man, notice it's a certain man, okay? Somebody specific here. Went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And fell among thieves, kind of like Adam, and fell among the thief that was Satan. Okay, so he was a thief and a murderer, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And Christian, you used to be half dead, weren't you? Okay. You were dead in trespasses and sins in your spirit, right? But your body was still alive and your soul was dying slowly as you accumulated more and more of that red sun all over it to get them blemishes and spots. So you might be that certain person. Okay. And so the Lord continues explaining how basically priests and Levites don't do much for you. And that's true today. So don't be going to live for answers. Verse 33. Okay. But a certain Samaritan, where the capital is, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Okay. And so the Samaritans, the Lord Jesus Christ, he saw you when you were stuck in Jericho, when you were in that city of palm trees and you were lost and on your way to hell and all this. God found you. Okay. And he had compassion on him. Verse 34. And went to him and bound up his wounds, because you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, your wounds. Okay, that bruising that he took at Calvary's cross saved you from your sin, right? And then pouring in oil and wine. He gave you the oil of the Holy Ghost. It was poured in your heart. And then the Lord gave you joy. That's the wine. Okay. And set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn. That's a church. And took care of him. And so we see here how the Lord is connecting, okay, Jericho to basically a picture of what happens to us in salvation. And so when I think of palm trees in Jericho, I think of God plucking you out, okay? God reached you when you were stuck in this present evil world, and he worked with you, and he treated you, and he brought you to a place so you can continue to grow in grace and knowledge of him, okay? We talked about the walls of Jericho and how Joshua and his men, they destroyed it after just walking around seven times and yelling. Make no sense. Okay? That does not seem like the way you destroy a wall, but when God is in it, he can do things that we think are impossible. Okay? But one thing we didn't mention is that there was a harlot in there. Somebody who was half dead once, but she responded to the spies that were sent by God and gave his word, and she said she did not want to be part of that group. And she got pulled out, and she survived. Her name is Rahab, okay? And she is now part of the generations of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can read about her. okay? So she was one of them palm trees that was pulled out of that city of palm trees. You see that? And she survived, and she's one of God's own. Despite being, you know, a Gentile and all this, okay? Notice that. So we see this connection here. Go to Song 7 now. Song of Solomon, Chapter 7. So, yeah, maybe it's talking about you in some way. Song of Solomon. Now, is this a doctrinal application? Yeah, I don't know. Okay? But there's a spiritual one here. Song of Solomon. If I could find it here. Chapter 7. It's right after Ecclesiastes. And you get here a beautiful love story of a man and his bride. And it pictures, in part, Christ and his bride. You're his bride, right? Okay. Song 7 and verse 6. You have your Savior telling you. How fair and how pleasant art thou, O love, for delights. So he looks at you and he's like, man, you look gorgeous. Okay? Kind of like what I do with my wife. Okay, a lot. See that? Verse 7. 
And then he says, notice, this thy stature, so this is how you stand and this is how you look, is like to a palm tree. See that? Okay. And if anybody who's seen palm trees, they tend to go pretty straight usually. They go pretty high, okay? And they last in their areas, you see? But he's connecting this bride's stature to the palm tree as if it's something good. Something that you want to strive to be, okay? You want to be clean and upright in heart, Christian. Okay? Kind of like a palm tree. Verse eight, uh, 7. And thy breasts are clusters of grapes, and the breast is the area of your body where your heart is, and you want it filled with grapes. Okay? We'll talk about that in a second. Verse 8. I said, I will go up to the palm tree. I will take hold of the boughs thereof. God said he's going to take hold of you. He's going to take control. If you're a palm tree, he's taking control of your life, and you've allowed this. Okay. I will take, uh, now also thy breast shall be as clusters of the vine. Remember, we talked about the oil and the wine that God poured into your heart to give you joy. You see that? It's all in there. And the smell of thy nose like apples. How do you smell to God? We talked about words fitly spoken like these here are like apples of gold and pictures in silver. So because you have the word in your heart, you smell like this to God and you make him delight in you. Okay? At least that should be your goal, Christian, right? You want to be like a palm tree, right? Okay? Remember, Song of Solomon is talking about the bride after, you know, basically we're in the consummation. We're at the part in Revelation 19 over there and all that stuff. You have to decide right now as the one that's, you know, espoused if you're going to actually manifest this in your life. Verse 9, And the roof of thy mouth like the best wine for my beloved, wine that goeth down sweetly, okay? Alcoholic wine ain't sweet, for those who are thinking that, okay? It's grape juice. Causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. And your presence and the way you speak and you handle yourself, your conversation is such that when others who are asleep spiritually hear you, they want to speak and talk about your God. So there's definitely a connection there. Okay? We definitely have a goal that Jesus Christ wants us to manifest. He wants us to be like the palm tree. Well, how do we get there? There's the next question. Go to Exodus 15. Exodus 15. Exodus 15 and verse 22 Okay, Israel's already been brought across the Red Sea and all this. They're redeemed in this way, but they're still babies. And so in Exodus 15, verse uh, 22, the Bible says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. Okay. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Okay, so it's kind of like you. You got saved, and all of a sudden, as a baby, you realize you need some milk. Okay, the Bible's like milk. And you don't know where to go. You don't know where to find it. And so you go to verse 23. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Okay. When you're a baby, you might come to God and be like, Lord, where am I supposed to get your word? I don't know what to do. How do I find it? I'm starving here. Okay. You start realizing that not all Christians are Christians in some ways. See? You start figuring that out. And so verse 25 this is what happens. Okay, the man of God is going to cry out to the Lord, or God's going to send a man or woman of God to you to show you the way. Okay, verse 25. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. What tree? Which when he had cast into the waters, the waters remained sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Where was that? Verse 27. And they came to Elam, where... Uh, where were twelve wells of water and three score and ten palm trees. Notice that. And they encamped there by the waters. Okay? And all of a sudden they were brought to a place where there were twelve wells of water, plenty of water for all the children of Israel. And the Bible just happens to mention there's seventy palm trees. What's that about? Okay? Maybe it's the tree that God used to heal the waters. Okay? I know that palm leaves are used for cancer. Uh, they used to treat cancer. I know that. I know the oils have healing properties. I don't know if they actually can purify water. Though. I've been looking at that. Okay. But you see this. Okay. Twelve. Twelve is the number of what? Israel. Okay. They got twelve tribes. And to the Jews were given the oracles of God. 
70 palm trees. Christian, you're the palm trees, right? There are 70 disciples besides the 12 that follow Jesus Christ. Okay. So maybe this is showing you that when you realize that you need to get good water, God's going to guide you to a good church with actual Christian disciples in it. You see that? So you can grow and be like those other palm trees. Because right now you're just like, well, you're just budding right now. I mean, you're still trying to figure stuff out. Okay? You need guidance. And getting back to the reality of that good Samaritan and his end, remember we said the end was like the church. What I didn't tell you is that he gave the innkeeper two pence. That's two days wages. For 2,000 years, Christians are going to be in the church age dealing with that. And God is still doing that with each and every one of us. Okay? He wants us to become palm trees. He wants to be able to say to each and every one of us what he told his bride in Song of Solomon. See? So it's no coincidence that there were palm leaves on the floor when he was walking by and declaring that he was the king. Not only that, go to Psalm 92. Psalm 92. So we see this connection to the Christian and how, yes, it represents us, but it's not automatic. You're not a palm tree in God's eyes because you're saved. Okay, you got to live for God. Psalm 92 and verse 12, Bible says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, colon, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So your spiritual growth is like that of a cedar, and cedars are nice and big and thick, and they don't actually break down very easily. But you flourish like the palm tree. You have that kind of beauty that you manifest. Okay? Psalm 1, verse 3, you're like a tree planted by the rivers of water, right? It talks about your leaves not withering. Wherever you go, you prosper. That's the flourishing. You flourish like the palm tree if you are actually righteous in your Christian walk, are you? Okay? Because if you're not, you, maybe you're not one of them leaves that were laid down for the Lord to walk over. Okay? Maybe you're the one ones that stayed in one of them Jews' pockets or something. Okay? Hanging out in the back. Okay? Thank God you're saved, but... You're not letting God use you. Okay? God wants you to flourish. God wants to give you more than just life. Life more abundantly. Okay? Do you want that? We're going to make that decision. And so if we make that decision, all of a sudden we got to find the man or woman of God and get our lives straight. So go to Judges 4. Judges 4. Where do you think you'd find them? Okay? Let me guess, you found them under thorns, right? That's where you find them, right? Okay, clearly not. Judges 4. Judges 4. You won't find them in a Mormon church, say that much. Judges 4 in verse 4. Check this out. Okay. Bible says, And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepo, uh, Lepidoth, she judged Israel at that time, and she dwelt where? Under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel and Mount Ephraim. Okay. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And Christian, that's what you need to find. You need to find a man or woman of God who's under the palm tree. Who's manifesting righteousness that can properly judge, not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment according to the scriptures. Okay. So much so that even unbelievers, because not everybody in the children of Israel is actually saved. Okay. Maybe an unbeliever will look at you and recognize that you seem different and try to get shade under your palm tree. To get some information. Okay. So are you like Deborah? Okay. Do people come to you and try to find out about God? Okay. Do they see you as weird in all this? Okay. Do they worry about if they cuss in front of you and say I'm sorry? Okay. Happens to me all the time. And I'm like, you need to talk to God. <laughs> so I'm not God. Okay. But they know there's something weird there. Okay. They see it. That's what you want. It's because you were under that palm tree. Okay? If you're a man or woman of God, it'll be known of you. You won't have to tell anybody about it. Okay? People knew what Deborah was about. That's why they came looking for her. Okay? See? And yes, women can be prophets. It's right there. Okay? For people who say that can't be so, yes, that's not true. Okay? Patty is a prophet. Okay? She can say scripture to you. It's all it takes. No, it's not right. This isn't rocket science, ladies and gents. Okay? It's just Bible. 
And so we see this reality, but it goes even further than just what you're doing now. Okay? There's a goal in the future with these palm trees. Go to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And Leviticus 23 is a famous chapter about the feasts, right? The great feasts of Israel. And every feast has meaning and purpose. That's why God gave them. He wants his people to reflect on things he has done and shall do in the future. Likewise, we should do the same. Leviticus 23, verse 40. Talking about the Feast of Tabernacles, and the Bible says, And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees. What, what are those? What are goodly trees? Branches of palm trees. See that? And the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And you find out that these trees are used in part to build the tabernacles for the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? The whole point of the Feast of Tabernacles is that God would be with us. That he would dwell with men. Okay? And he tabernacle with men is Jesus Christ. He's the God-man. And he tabernacles right now with men through you. Because he lives in you. So you're the palm tree. I don't know how much clearer it can get. Okay? But this feast here is reminding Israel of what was going on as they were sojourning so they can look forward to millennial times. Okay? So they can reflect on the reality that they're the branches. They need the true vine, just like we do. Because without Jesus Christ, we're nothing. See? And so we see these realities. Now, did I just make all this stuff up? Okay? Well, let's actually look at the Millennial Temple. Let's just cheat. Go to Ezekiel 41. I mean, it's in there. Let's see if it talks about palm trees or not. Ezekiel 41... Is this all just speculation and supposition, or is this legitimate? Ezekiel 41, go to verse 17. Ezekiel's temple is actually the millennial temple. We're going to see this one day. We might even be part of building it, okay? Or at least coordinating things, because you're going to be there. And we'll notice in Ezekiel 41, in verse 17, Ezekiel says, to that above the door, even unto the inner house. So once again, this is the most holy place, kind of the inner house where the oracle is. In this case, Jesus Christ is going to be sitting there. Okay? And without, and by all the wall round about, within and without by measure. And it was made with cherubims and what? Palm trees. So that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub. And every cherub had two faces, etc., etc. There's cherubims and palm trees all over that wall of the temple. In the millennium, you're going to be there, and you're going to be glorified, and you're going to be like the angels, okay? Cherub and angel, you're kind of just equal, you're just there, 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 you see that? And the reason why it's in the innermost place is you're going to be able to just go up to God and do whatever, and other people are going to have to go through all this stuff in order to get sanctified and all this, and you can just kind of teleport there and talk to your God. That's, that's why. That's the kind of closeness you've developed after living for God for years. Okay. Because you made the decision to be one of those palm leaves that was laid down on the floor so that Jesus could walk over and use you for his glory. Okay. Now, there's going to be children that cause shame to the Lord. I mean, it says it in Proverbs, and they'll probably be cleaning a couple stalls for 100 years, I guess. But I'm sure they'll get everything together. Okay, but if you get it together now, you might be that close to God then. So why not start now? Okay, You're already in eternal life. There's a new beginning. You see? So it looks like our thoughts were correct after all. Palm trees really do talk about you. Okay? Because one day, when you get your new glorified body, you're going to be like unto the angels. You're going to be around their level. You're going to be a little more than just a man. Does that make sense? Okay? Because men were a little lower than the angels, right? That's kind of, although they're a little higher than us, or whatever. Okay? So let's take this reality and put it all together. Go back to John 12. Come on here. John chapter 12. So learn all these cool things about palm trees and find out the reality that we need to be like that bride and try to live in such a way where Jesus Christ can tell us that when we get to the millennium. And so what's the key to making that happen? If there's anything you need to take away from this, it's this right here. Okay. John 12, 
and go to verse 14, remember that it says in Palm Sunday, and Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, we already quoted that. Okay? One thing you need to realize is that you used to be a young ass. Okay? You were that donkey. And you were wild. And you were sad. There was a time where you said, no mas. Okay? I'm going to let myself get domesticated. Okay? And Jesus sat on you. Right? Okay? You let him sit on the throne of your heart and take control. And when that happened in verse 13, all of a sudden you're like that donkey that the Lord was sitting on and people decide to lay those branches of palm trees in the same path, not just where Jesus was as king, but where you were walking as a donkey. So you were there. And those palm trees once again refer to the reality of the flourishing of your works that you were prospering in your life. Okay? Okay? And so, if you let Jesus Christ live through you, this is the point, okay? You let him live through you, guess what? There's palm leaves that are going to be in the future for you, and there's stuff that's in the back, and it lasts. It's eternal work that sticks. And Jesus Christ is walking with you in the present, making sure that's happening. See? Okay? It's a manifestation of the reality that if you live the victorious Christian life, you will have works that will follow you forever. So those Jews there, when they were laying those things down, they didn't know what they were doing. Okay? They didn't think that far. Okay? But God wants you to make sure, or wants you to make sure that you understand that if you allow him to walk with you in this life, that you will have works that continue forever. You'll have an eternal weight of glory that won't ever fade away. Your leaves will not wither like it says in Psalm 1. And the reason why the glory of God is going to be shown through you is because you were right beside him the entire time. Okay. And so I just asked Christian, are you going to be a palm tree? I want to be. And not just because I'm Puerto Rican. There's a lot of those over there in that island. Amen. Okay. Brother Edward, do you mind closing us in prayer, sir?